Hi, I'm Bob, and welcome to Between the Sheets, where we look at Microsoft Excel and related technologies. In previous episodes, we looked at how some AI tools performed when tasked with creating Excel formulas. We tested ChatGPT, Google Bard, FormulaBot, Angelix, and the online edition of Excel. In this video, we're going to test Microsoft Copilot. I'm going to ask Copilot to do the same tasks I asked of these other tools. I didn't run through any of this in advance, so you are going to see me do it for the first time. So let's take a look and see how it works. I'm going to run two tests, a simple one and a more complicated one. And I have two sheets in this workbook. The first is simple. It has columns for department, state, hours, and rate. And I want a formula that will add all the hours down column D only where the state is New Jersey. See, we've got all these different states mixed in. Let's go down to the bottom there. In a previous episode, I showed you how to use the sum if function to get the result. We're going to see how Copilot gets the result for us that we can put right in there in D38. Now, the second worksheet, let me go here. This one is a little bit more complicated. You see, we have a list of names down column A, and some names have middle initials, some have middle names, some don't have anything in the middle. It's just a first name and a last name. I want a formula that will extract the first and last name and remove anything in between. And if there's nothing in between, there's nothing to remove, and it should just be used as is. This is something I also did in a previous episode, and it was very complicated. It required seven functions. Let's go back here. There are a couple of ways to access Copilot. The easiest way is to go to the Bing homepage, where we are now, and click on Copilot right up there. If you don't see it there for some reason, you can go directly to its page on the address you see on your screen. And you know how the web is. This can change at any time. As with our previous tests, I'm going to ask Copilot to solve the easier sheet first. AI applications do better when we talk in natural language and give them plenty of information. And I'm going to speed this up a little bit so you don't have to sit there and watch me type. Feel free to pause the video if you want. One quick thing before I do. This chat box has predictive text. So if I start typing in you notice it's going through all that. I find this very annoying. <laughs> so just FYI. So let's see what answer it gives us for that. That looks pretty good. I'm going to copy. Now I can drag over there and copy, or I could just hit this to copy. Let's go to Excel. And I'm just going to go in there and paste. That looks pretty good. That's exactly what I would have done. I might put in range names to make this a little easier to recognize, but I would not expect Copilot to do that. With the cell references, this is great. Now let's ask it about the second worksheet. You might find it a little silly that I'm being polite and saying please, but I found with AI tools in general that asking politely sometimes produces better results. Also, maybe the robots will treat me a little better when they take over. Maybe. So back in Copilot, let's go and ask the second question. I'm just going to paste that in. And what I like is that rather than just giving us a formula and saying, here, use it, this describes what it is and what it's doing. So once again, I'm going to click copy. Let's go back to Excel and I'm going to go and paste. That looks good. I'm going to go and double click the autofill tool. Okay, it does not like that. So where you notice here, I'm, and I'm seeing this for the first time here, so you're seeing me seeing this for the first time, where, where there is a middle name and a middle initial, it works great, like there, and here, and here, and here, but where there is no middle name, this thing does not work. This kind of freaks out. So it failed that test. 
To be fair, the other AI tools also failed this test. So let me give you two solutions that do work, and you can use either of these. I've covered this in previous episodes, so I'm just going to give you the formulas without describing them in detail. Hey, I'm not Copilot. What can I tell you? So I'm going to start here. Actually, I'll just undo. I don't even have to select. Let's just undo that. So I'm going to paste one of the formulas in like that. And I actually have two formulas. Let's stretch this out. So I'm going to show you both formulas and they both work. Here, let me paste in the other one. And what I'm going to do is select both of these, double click, and they are both working really great. I'll make this a little easier for you. Here are both of the formulas so you can read them. Now, one more thing. What if there's a first name or a last name that consists of two words? Let's go down over there. And let's say you have a name like that. Well, this is not really working the way we expect. That's kind of ridiculous. It's removing the van as though it's a middle name. Now, we can't start inserting a lot of exceptions into the formulas, but there is something better. What we could do is treat the space between the van and the dike as though it's a letter. This is what's called a hard space or a non-breaking space. The screen to do this is slightly different in the Windows and Mac editions, so I will show you both. I'm in Windows here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click there in that cell, and I'm just going to delete the space between the words. Now on the ribbon bar, I'm going to go to the insert tab and all the way on the right, I'm going to go here to symbols and I choose symbol. My screen is a little squished for the recording. Yours might not be squished. You might have both the pi and the little omega visible. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to click that. And in this dialog box that comes up, you see there's two tabs. I'm going to go to the special characters tab and you see there's that non-breaking space. And I'm just going to double click it and I close. And now when I enter the cell, it works great. Now let's do this in the Mac edition. So here on the Mac, I'm going to enter the name again. And again, same issue. So on the Mac, kind of same thing there. I'm going to double click in that cell and I remove the space. And there's two things you could do or two ways you could get the same dialog box. I'm going to go to the insert tab. Just like in Windows, you could click the symbol item. And this brings up the character viewer. Now you might get this little thingy like that. If you do, you can hit the symbol button again and you bring up the character viewer. Another way you could do that is if you double tap the function key in the lower left corner of the keyboard. Now you might not get the character viewer looking like this. I click that. You might get the character viewer looking like that. I find this one is kind of hard to use, even though it's newer. I'm going to hit this little button so I have the character viewer looking the way it should. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click in the search box and I'm going to search for the word space. And you'll notice there's kind of this blank area. There's actually three items there. I'm going to click on the third one here. And just like in Windows, this tells us it's a no break space. So to insert it, I'm going to double click it. I've noticed, by the way, this is a little sensitive. Sometimes double clicking it will actually put in two of those non-breaking spaces. I don't know, maybe that's just my machine, but I'm going to hit enter and it looks great. I could close the character viewer now. Well, we have our verdict. Microsoft Copilot is very good at writing basic or intermediate Excel formulas, but like other popular AI tools, still needs improvement for advanced formulas. So until next time, my name is Bob, and this has been Between the Sheets. 